Welcome back to Velshi and Rule. One week from today, the first group of 10 Democratic candidates will take the stage in Miami. Right here on MSNBC, NBC News, and Telemundo. The first night will feature the mayor of America's largest city, senators from Massachusetts, Minnesota, and New Jersey, along with a governor and, a co and current or former members of Congress. The second night, Thursday night, will showcase 10 other candidates, including a former vice president, three more senators, a former governor, a Midwest mayor, and more. That second night is where former Colorado Governor John Hickenlooper will have his chance to stand out. Hickenlooper led Colorado for eight years after serving as mayor of Denver. He began his professional life as a businessman opening restaurants and a microbrewery. Hickenlooper's platform in plans Hickenlooper, Hickenlooper's platform includes a plan to reboot American capitalism, including economic assistance to rural communities. He's a rare candidate who does not endorse Medicare for all and the Green New Deal, calling for different approaches to health care and climate change. But like other Democrats, he believes American gun laws need to be reformed, something that hits close to home coming from the state that lived through the Columbine school shooting back in 1999 and the Aurora theater shooting during his first term as governor in 2013. Governor Hickenlooper joins us now. Good to see you, sir. Thank you for being with us. You have tried to draw a contrast, something you're going to have to do, by the way, in a little over a week, uh, between yourself and the other candidates. You've come out forcefully against socialism. And I, I guess we want to ask you, what are the things that you're targeting there? What policies or ideas uh, that are out there are you finding specifically objectionable because they feel like socialism to you? Well, I think these large expansions of government that are being proposed are not the solution. Uh, if we want to get to universal health care, I don't think we are going to get there by getting rid of private insurance. If we're going to really address climate change, we've got to be laser focused. And we can't be distracted by a promise that we're going to give every American uh, who wants one a government job. That's not how we're going to get to the solutions that this country needs. But are the, solu Go ahead. are the solutions immediate? I think about the American worker, specifically the coal worker, and many have said, listen, we're going to get you a new job, a better job, a clean energy job, but there doesn't seem to be evidence of it. And those voters go back to the president. Do you have evidence of where you're going to find better, smarter jobs for those people in the short term? Yeah, absolutely. And I think a big part of why I'm running is because in Colorado, we created a template, a model for a lot of these types of solutions. And I, I'm the one person running who's actually done the things that other people are just talking about. Where? When you look at rural workers, well, we, we gave uh, incentives to entrepreneurs to start small businesses in rural parts of the state of Colorado uh, so that the, for the first four years, not only would the business pay no taxes of any kind to the state, but none of the employees would pay any taxes. And it, it hasn't been huge, but if you're a, a town with two or 3,000 people and suddenly there's a new business with 35 employees, it makes a big difference. You begin to look forward to your future with more optimism. And I think that's a big part of this battle is for too long we haven't delivered to the rural parts of America. In Colorado, by the end of next year, we'll have broadband in every city and town in the entire state. Be the first state to do that. Those are the kinds of commitments that, that our rural communities should expect. Let me ask you, last time we were on, we were discussing some of your ideas for more competition in the marketplace uh, beyond antitrust laws. You, you were a small business owner. I'm more curious about what you can do at the federal level to help small businesses. When we talk to small businesses who complain about regulation, they're generally not federal regulations. They're state and municipal. Well, but as a small business person, I bring that, that same scrappy spirit to everything I do, and I'll bring it to Washington. The part of this is to create a culture whereby not just the federal government, but state governments and local governments realize that, that red tape, like excessive bureaucracy, really diminishes our ability to expand the small businesses that exist and they dissuade would-be entrepreneurs from starting a new business. For the last 23, 24 years, every year we've had less, have a, we've had a fewer number of small businesses start than the previous year. That's not how we're going to expand the middle class. Small business is a huge part of the solution, but we've got to make sure that they have access to capital, that there's a trained workforce. You know, we've, we're the one campaign that's out there recognizing that two thirds of, a, of, of Americans don't have a four year degree. How do we make sure they get the skills training and, and a sliding scale to get into community colleges so that they can fill these new generations of, of jobs and professions that are coming every day? 
You sat down with uh, NBC's Harry Smith, uh, Governor, to talk about your big idea, job skills training. This is obviously a big theme for you. Uh, in Colorado, you helped create the app apprenticeship program career-wise. Uh, tell me how you think this scales nationally. What, what sort of what job or industry do you think will be most important uh, that we should be focusing on for the next decade? Well, the nice thing about career-wise and, and this notion of apprenticeships available for everyone is that it, it incorporates any profession. So those professions that most need workers and trained workers are going to be the most aggressive to participate in apprenticeships. In Colorado, we're now in our third year of pilots, and we have a waiting list of businesses that want to get a 16 or a 17-year-old, and they work two hours or two days the first week. Uh, two days per week the first year, and then three days the second year, four or five days the third year. Uh, these apprenticeships give kids the skills to really understand what it's like to work. And more importantly, they provide businesses trained workers, which is, I mean, right now we've got, what is it, 7.5 million unfilled jobs and only 6.3 million people looking. But There's Governor, a real disconnect just, just here. one thing. This isn't a new idea. Uh, President Obama had it in his Labor Department. It's what Ivanka Trump talks about all the time. Is, are, the, are, we fa are, are the current programs failing? No, but they haven't been implemented successfully. And I think this is sort of what, you know, part of when I'm going to be on the debate, I want to talk about the difference between having great ideas and actually getting them done. And I think what we've done in Colorado again and again is demonstrate that it's a good idea is a great thing, but it doesn't count if you can't get it done. And what we've done again and again, we've done the big progressive things that Washington has failed to deliver. Hey, MSNBC fans, thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Subscribe by clicking on that button down there and click on any of the videos here to watch the latest interviews and highlights. You can get more MSNBC for free every day with our newsletters. Just visit msnbc.com newsletters to sign up now.